guys, I'm Shada, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you my high school art portfolio. It's going to be a fun one, so stick around. Before we dig into today's super dope tutorial, I have something I want to share with you guys. I finally have a new website. Now, build new website was on my to-do list for only about two years. As you guys know, I have the blog and the YouTube channel, but for a while now, I've wanted an online space where I could showcase my portfolio as an artist, somewhere you guys could come and find out what's new with me and the brand. Well, this summer, I was approached by a company called Portfolio Box, and they do sites specially for artists and creative professionals. They have all these gorgeous site templates that really put your images first. You can choose any layout you like, choose your fonts, your colors, and you don't need to know any code. Pick your domain, and they'll host it for you. So thank you to Portfolio Box for my amazing new site, and thank you for kindly sponsoring today's video. Okay, so today I thought it would be sort of fun to show you guys my art portfolio from high school and beyond. Um, it's something that I just keep in the back of my closet and never really look at. So why not open it up and share it with you and you can kind of get an idea of where I've come from as an artist and how my style has changed over the years. So without further ado, let's, let's just take a look, shall we? Um, okay, so when I was in high school, I took as many art classes as I possibly could. And I know that most of you out there will understand for creatives, it's getting harder and harder to take all of those classes in high school. If you take art, you can't take music, at least that's how it was at my school. But I did manage to do pretty well. I was able to take graphic design, um, and back then, our graphic design class didn't even have computers, so that just gives you an idea of how old I am. I also took photography, and it was in a dark room with um, not digital photography at all, but that really helped me to understand how a camera truly works, so I'm really thankful for that. And then I took sort of fine art every year from grade 9 uh, through my final high school year, so I did as many art co courses as I possibly could, and I really enjoyed them. Um, now, in my final year of art, we had to do a project, a big, you know, year-end project, and we had to choose what our topic would be and sort of what we would tackle with our art. Now, my topic was, I think it was something like the plight of women in the world or in society. I was just insufferable. Um, <laughs> but it was a big year. My final high school year was 2001. That was the year of 9-11 and we were hearing a lot about Afghanistan and the Taliban in the news and it was also, you know, the AIDS pandemic in Africa was uh, constantly in the paper. So I was influenced by all of that. Okay, let's get into the art. I'm talking too much, but so this is a piece that I did for my year end. Now this was worked into a much larger painting and almost a sculpture piece, but this was the initial sketch for that and it shows the girl in the burqa with the tear. And this was something I drew from a photograph. Uh, looking back at it now, I sort of feel like my subject matter for that year-end project was so far away from who I was as a person. I would have loved to see myself pick something a little closer to home and really explore that and get kind of creative with that. But this is who I was, I guess, this very sort of big thinking, um, crazy kid. So. Let's see what else is in here. Um, okay, so this is a pencil sketch that I did of, uh, I think this had something to do with AIDS in Africa, and I would have seen this image in the paper. I was drawn to it because it's such a high contrast image. It was black and white, there was a lot of detail, so in that way, it made it really easy for me to draw from. And, um, and yeah, and then this one I also worked into a larger piece later on. So when I was in high school, I loved drawing people. I think that's becoming obvious. And I loved doing faces in pencil especially, and I was always trying to get better at that. This is one that I did of a little boy, and children are sort of notoriously difficult to sketch because their faces don't have a lot of defined features. So whereas the old wrinkly man, he's sort of going to be your best subject, especially for a budding artist, and the kid is going to be a lot more difficult. So I think the reason I was drawn to this image, and I'm always drawing from photos, 
uh, for most of these, is that his face is sort of all scrunched up and he's crying. So in that way, I felt I was able to kind of um, tackle drawing a small child. And I I'm, was very happy with it at the time, and I'm still quite happy with the way that that looks. Um, okay, speaking of wrinkly old man, here is an image that I did of, of an old gentleman sitting on a bench. I think I did this one afternoon. I was, had like a study hall period, so I was always sketching. Anytime I had a moment to myself after my homework was done or whatever, I would be drawing. So I drew him. Um, this is another study of a face, and this would have just been taken from a magazine photo. And she's quite pretty. I think I was not happy with her at the time, but now I don't really see, I don't really see all the faults that I would have seen back then. Um, and here's another sketch of a child. I'm sure a theme is forming here. I love doing um, portraits. I loved working um, with these very high contrast pencil portraits. And actually, I started a small business in my final year of high school doing pencil portraiture. So people would pay me to draw pictures of their kids or their uncle or whatever. And I... I think I would charge like $30 or something for a portrait and I would work really hard on them and I really drove myself to be this perfect sketch artist and now looking back I just think how boring that was and I was so caught up in the idea of being able to draw perfectly that I didn't really leave a lot of room or time or energy for myself to be creative as an artist and to think about um, you know, to think outside the box and by the time I went to apply to art school, I applied to OCAD, which is the Ontario College of Art and Design, I took the, my portfolio with me and it had all these sketch images and some of the pencil portraits that I did on commission and, you know, I was really proud of it at the time, but I remember the other kids in the room, I just remember this one guy, he had I think it was something, it was made out of like straw and cardboard and just looked so crazy and I just had no time for that. I was like, ugh, what is that, you know? Mm. And now I'm like, he probably had something so cool and creative and I just had these boring, basically, photographs, uh, you know, an image that I'd taken from a photo and I, I wish uh, if I could go back that I would have given myself permission to be creative and to take joy in the act of painting and to take joy in the materials. And gosh, I think at the time I would have, you know, poo-pooed that. <laughs> so it's just funny how things change. And I think through doing these portraits, art for me became really pedantic. It became boring. It became really stressful for sure when I was on a deadline, you know, to get my 30 bucks. And and I left art behind for a really long time. I just didn't think it was worth, worth it. Um, okay, so here's another wrinkly old man. So this one, again, I, I think I found a very high contrast photo in a book and I thought I can be sort of successful with that. So I copied from the photo and did the pencil sketch. Uh, I don't have a lot more in here. This is the one that I showed you first of the mother and child in the AIDS pandemic in Africa. And so I used a computer imaging to sort of work that into a more cohesive piece and just play around with it a little bit. And oh, there's a drawing. I think I did this the year after high school, but that was just a quick sketch. I think the body's a little, a little funky, but that was just practice sketching. Now, over the years, I think the way I found my way back to art, because obviously I'm teaching as much as I can on the channel, is that I just sort of left it behind. I didn't go to art school. I entered the workforce. And over the next few years, I found myself only drawing and making art um, when I needed to, you know, create something for work. So I might do a, a really cool chalkboard for my workplace, or I would paint Christmas cards and Christmas gifts. And, and, and that was the only art I would ever do. Uh, let me see, I have an example here. I made this for my brother-in-law. Like, we, gave, we made him um, a bacon rye whiskey and I did the label for it. And I love doing stuff like that, just fun little projects. And that's sort of how I found my way back to art, was through making the artifacts of my everyday life into beautiful things. 
And if I had to sum up the philosophy of the channel in just a few words, it would be that, that we're taking those artifacts, things like to-do lists and calendars, and we're making them beautiful. And that's what I'm really excited about now. And I'm trying to leave behind the boredom of getting it right and being perfect. And I hope I can encourage you guys to do that as well. I hope you've enjoyed seeing my high school art and I hope you have a wonderful holiday. And I just wanna take a second to say thank you so much to all of my patrons who joined and supported me this week. You're amazing. And for those of you that haven't heard, I started a Patreon site. So now for a small monthly donation, um, you can have access to all of the calendar pages, stickers, JPEGs, and there's lots more artwork coming. So go check it out. There's a link up on the screen right now.